Hello everyone. I don't like doing videos like this. I don't like making videos where I'm just sort of ranting at the camera. You know, they're quite exhausting to make. But I, I just felt the need to talk about this. So in case you weren't aware, the latest edition of Doctor Who magazine has been released. And within it is the long-awaited interview with current Doctor Who showrunner Chris Chibnall, revealing all about his era on Doctor Who. And some of the things he reveals, well, they're quite something, to say the least. But before we get into it, if you could do me a teeny tiny little favour and click that subscribe button, I'd be ever so much appreciative. We are trying to get to 12,000 subscribers as soon as possible. Subscriptions have slowed down a little bit of late, but I think that's just because, you know, there's not been as much Doctor Who stuff going on. So if you could do me a favour and click subscribe if you do enjoy the content, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, go and follow me on Twitter if you don't already. I talk about a lot of this stuff over there before I make it into videos. But with that said, let's get into the video. Now, I'm going to be using tweets from the Doctor Who Production News account as sort of visual representations of what I'm talking about, just to show you all that I'm not making this up. So first of all, and probably most interestingly, Chibnall had absolutely no plans for what to do with Doctor Who when he took over. I'm not making this up. This isn't hyperbole. He's literally said when he was given the job, he came up with the ideas as he was there. There wasn't a plan. There wasn't this grand scheme. It was just essentially fought up as they went along. And given what we've seen for the last five years, doesn't that just make sense? All of the plots that just sort of go nowhere, the introduction of things that seem important only for them to be shelved immediately, the hints towards character beats that are never followed up on, this makes so much sense and it absolutely boggles my mind. It absolutely boggles my mind how a fan of Doctor Who from the 1980s and a professional television writer had no ideas at all for what to do with Doctor Who until he got the job. Is that, like, shocking to anyone else, or is it just me? But it gets better, it gets better, because apparently, the Timeless Child, there's, there's no plan to reveal, you know, where that Timeless Child came from, or what the memories are, or anything. The whole point is, it's a mystery. Okay, so why has the last two years been building up something we're not going to see? What was the point? Can someone please explain? Why we had all that build-up for nothing. I'm not even a big fan of the Timeless Child arc, but I really feel sorry for those that are, because you're not going to get a proper conclusion he's admitted as such here. He says that the whole point was to, to reinstate mystery in Doctor Who or whatever, but the thing is, you can do that in so many ways without just baiting fans along for years. RTD did it brilliantly with the Time War, something that felt organic and fresh and new, not lore bait and teasing and bollocks. I'm really sorry if I'm, I'm aggressive in this video. I don't mean to be. This has just really annoyed me. And I feel like not many people are going to talk about this because for some reason, a lot of people are just like, oh, it's fine. You know, it's fine. It's fine. We as a fan base, in my opinion, discard all the NMDs. You know, they don't count. Discard all the bigoted people. I'm not talking about them. Majority of people in this fan base, or at least on Twitter, give Chibnall Who so much leeway. So much leeway. If... Moffat had revealed that there was no plan for his Doctor Who when he took over. There would have been riots in streets. Speaking of which, it was revealed that Battle of Ranskorov Kolos, his finale to Series 11, by the way, was a first draft. And doesn't it just show? You know when people said, oh, this, this script feels like a first draft? It literally was. I don't mean to get angry. And there are some ideas that he reveals in this article that were genuinely cool. Like, apparently the Thomas Child was based on his actual real-life experience of being adopted and found family and stuff. I wish that had been focused on more, but it's at the very least a decent idea. But that's the problem with Chibnall. The ideas are sometimes decent, but the execution is piss poor. And I'm fed up and tired of giving it constantly the benefit of the doubt. Whenever a new episode gets announced... People are like, oh, this looks really good, this looks really good. And then it comes out and people go, oh, oh, it wasn't. Why do we get ourselves into a position where we'll just eat up anything as a fan base? We as a fan base deserve better. I know that sounds entitled, but I genuinely believe we do deserve better. I don't think we deserve to be strung along with an arc that's not going to get answered for two years. It's insulting to the audience, and no wonder people are dropping off Doctor Who, because there's just no reason to keep watching, because it's essentially been made up on the spot. Honestly, I'm just, I'm shocked. I'm genuinely shocked at some of the stuff that's revealed in this article. 
If you don't like this video, and if you love Chris Chibnall, fine. I don't really know what to tell you, but I'm fed up of giving him the benefit of the doubt and saying, oh, it's not that bad, only to have it thrown back in my face whenever I do. You know, I tried my best to give Flux a chance, you know, his most recent series. I even said, if you go back and watch some of my earlier reviews for that series, I was like, oh, this is actually a decent start. And then he just pisses it up the wall. And I'm fed up of acting like this is like a normal way to run a show. It just isn't. It's not normal for a guy to come into a show with no ideas on what to do with it. And it's not good that first drafts have been in final versions of the series. Now, I know people are going to say, I think Let's Kill Hitler was a first draft. And people mocked the hell out of Let's Kill Hitler when that was broadcast. That was one of the most panned episodes for a while. But when Chibnall does it, people are just like, eh, fine. I almost feel like Gordon Ramsay. Where's the passion? Come on! I know people are going to say, oh, Chibnall gets overhated, da, 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 whatever. I'm sorry, but if this was Moffat, I'd be seeing videos right now screaming at the cameras as I am for Chibnall. There is no difference. And what's more annoying about this is the constant, constant shifting of the goalposts that the fandom seems to indulge in that basically means that Chibnall's been allowed to get away with whatever because people will always shift it. Remember when people were like, no, 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 guys, guys, guys. Thasmin was obviously planned. There was obviously a plan for Thasmin. And then Matt Stevens comes out and goes, no, no, it wasn't planned. We had no plans of doing this until the fans brought it up. And the people went, no, 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 it doesn't matter that it wasn't planned. It's the constant shifting of the goalposts that in the Moffat era, in the RTD era, was nowhere near as prominent. Why is it now that we are so willing to accept mediocrity? I don't like, you know, insulting productions because I know that there's like a lot of people, and Chibnall included even, who've worked really hard on this era. And credit to everyone who has worked on it. But fundamentally, if your creative vision for a project is flawed, then that is going to negatively impact the whole creative project. It doesn't matter how talented the actors are, or the crew are, or the directors are, or the composers are. If your fundamental idea is based on practically nothing, then you are going to have a show that is about nothing. And that's just not what Doctor Who should be. I, I really apologise for this. It's not something I enjoy doing. I don't enjoy tearing into things. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, you're just a hater. I don't care at this point. I don't care about what the fan base thinks of me. I even tried to give Chibnall a compliment on Twitter the other day, being like, oh, I thought the, you know, the Timeless Child, like the idea of it being about found family was a good idea. I just wish it had been explored more. And I said how maybe if they'd have portrayed Tech to Yoon slightly differently, it would have made for a more interesting story because as it was, she was a very one-dimensional character. And I basically just got told, you're not adopted, so you can't have an opinion on it. Why are we like this? Thank you for watching, and I will see you later. Shout out to Debs Iona, Shane Smith, Ree Caffin, Seb Lowndes, Jay Monroe, Hash Shandicoot, Patrick Mewson, Simon Ashley, Steve Safaro, Andrew Townsend, Alex Robbins, Michael Dykes, Paul Bryden, Sam Yates, Michael Rhodes, Jerry the Meerkat, Heretic, Bibliotecaria Nerd, and Cameron Jefferson. If you want to become a member, feel free to do so. It really helps out. You get exclusive posts, shout outs in every video, and even your own badge and custom emojis to use.